and boom. All right, we are live now, Matt. Uh, welcome everybody to the stream on this lazy Sunday. Um, here in Tennessee, at least, it's raining, so not too much flying to do. And I've got Matt here with me. Matt, how are you? Hey, not bad. How you doing? Doing good. So Matt posted up on um, Facebook. He he has some experience with uh, aerial video DJI quadcopters, and you're learning to come coming into the FPV hobby, correct? Yep, I've flown some RTFs, but I've never actually built my own. So that's what I'm trying to do now. Okay. And he had some questions, and him and I got talking on Messenger, and I thought. Um, I'm wanting to do a stream and I want to help new people get some answers to their questions. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to do a stream. So I want to thank you for coming on, Matt, and um, say hello to everybody out there in the internet land watching. It looks like we do have a few people tuned in. Uh, give some people some shouts out in the chat. We got Sprayer, RD, Spider, uh, Mindman, Audio Geck, Artemis Prime, Drone Review Man of yeah. All Drones. Uh, to which or Twitch possibly? What's up? Um, Kimbo, got a few folks hanging out. Good to see all you guys. Yeah, they're all saying welcome to the new addiction. Uh, new addiction, Matt. So, uh, yeah, that's definitely going to be. I can tell. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Um, so Matt, I know you you sent me some pictures. He's got his frame built. You've got your ESC installed, and you've got motors connected. But um. I think you mentioned you're having some problems with even more some of the basic stuff, like all the abbreviations and just the general know-how of the hobby. Um, and I thought what we could do is just talk about kind of what everything is and what it does, and then maybe break apart some of the different uh, abbreviations and why they're there and what they're doing as well. Um, so I'm going to pull up the old trusty internet here and uh, let's see there we go it's a picture of a flight controller and this is just brain FPV um, I love their website I love their products and uh, short plug there for them I do sell their stuff so just to be honest about it but um, they're a good company and their websites real helpful for anybody that's learning you can go there and look at their manual and it's just loaded with information that can really help a person out. So I'm going to kind of use that um, to talk to you about it. I thought it would be a good thing for you, for us to be able to see and, and that sort of thing. So, um, But just to give you a general idea, think of FPV, or I like to think of FPV as a system, right? And you can think of it almost like a computer system. Um, so with a computer, you've got a motherboard. And that you would want to, in your mind, think of that as like the flight controller. Um, and you've got different peripherals that connect up to a computer via USB ports, right? Yep. So, have you seen the term UART? Yeah, I don't know what the abbreviation stands for, though. Um, I actually can't tell you what it technically stands for either as far as the abbreviation but I can tell you that in your mind you want to think of a UART like a USB port that's like the easiest way to relate it to something so um, it's it's just a line of communication from any device to the flight controller so just like you hook up um, a camera to your computer you plug it into the USB port it's going to be very similar with UARTs so anytime you want to control something that's how you do that. Um, and so you've got your brain, your flight controller, and obviously every peripheral just about on the quadcopter is going to connect up to it. Um, with that, there's two ways it happens, and th that means there's power, and then there's the signal. So we know the signals go through what? The signal goes to the UART. Yeah. And yeah. So the only thing we got left is power. And if you think of each one of these different components in that method, um, with a little bit of an exception on the ESCs, but we'll touch on that. Uh, if you think about each component that way, you've got to power it, and you've probably got some sort of a signal. Um, it's, it's 
easier to think about it in your head. You know what I mean? So yeah, your first real decision with a with any quad, um, say you've already got your frame. Well, we're not gonna go with that because it's not really the you know frames are all all different types for all different reasons, and that's a whole other subject. But let's say you've picked out your frame and you want to go and decide which flight controller. The the big step that you're going to have to decide is how you're going to power it. So, and that's that, that big system, the power system. So you're going to have two ways to do that. You can do a power distribution board and everything is basically going to be powered from that. Um, or you can do a flight controller that kind of has that built in. Um, the reason that's a big decision is because it's going to help you decide also which ESCs you're going to use. And you've probably noticed there's separate ESCs and then there's the 4-in-1 ESC, right? Yeah. So those components kind of determine your power systems. And if you think about it, just those two separate things, power and communication, everything kind of starts to get a little simpler when you actually look at the connections on the different parts. So what are the, what are the perks of using the four and one or the separate ESCs? A lot of people say it's race versus freestyle. Um, it, basically race guys like the lighter weight of the four and one ESC. Everything's all in one. Um, freestyle guys like individuals cause they can swap them when they wreck. Um, but it's it comes down to two things. It's room on your frame because a lot of frames don't have room in the stack where you're going to put the brain, the flight controller. Um, there may not be enough room for that extra ESC. So that's going to help you decide that depending on which frame you're going with. And then flat out, just if it, at some point, are you do you think you're going to want to work on this quad or do you see yourself replacing ESCs? If that's the case, you want to go individual just just right off the bat because it's cheaper in the long run to replace one ESC when you bust it than an entire four-in-one. Um, but a lot of the times, like, okay, if you look at the brain flight controller that I'm showing on the screen right now, it doesn't have a power built into it, right? There's no way to hook a LiPo battery up to it. And that's um, a real easy way to tell real quickly if a, a flight controller has the power side. If you can hook your LiPo, your big, huge LiPo wires to it, that's going to be able to tell you it's got that power distribution board built in. You can look at the brain and just see there's nowhere on it to connect a big LiPo. So you're going to have to use either a PDB um, or a flight or a uh, four in one ESC with it. I prefer four in four in ones if I can fit them. Um, but a lot of my builds I build one time and I don't have to mess with them too much, thankfully, because you know I just I kind of build them right once. But um, I know on yours you went with a four in one. Do you regret that you think, or do you, you just wondering? No, I was just kind of wondering what, I guess, the differences were and why people chose specific ones. But, I mean, it makes sense. Okay. So, and and that's, you got to look at it, those key components when you're picking out your flight controller. Do I need a power board or not? Um, if you know you need a power board, you have the option of going with a 4-in-1 ESC and powering the the flight controller that way and I think that's how your build is set up right yeah you're going to be powering yeah, the flight built controller into the, off yeah um, built into the 4 and one yeah so okay ESC is electronic speed controller that's what the abbreviation stands for there um, I know you did mention on abbreviations do you have any questions on ESCs specifically? I know you've got the four in one with the connector output on it. Um, while we're talking about ESCs, do you have any more questions about it? Um, I'm trying to, I want to, I'm going to pull up my, my actual ESC to see if I had anything specifically with it, but 
I, so one thing that I, I didn't know, but I learned during the build is it doesn't really matter from a motor that the three wire, which where the three wires connect on the three pads, because you can swap them around if you need to switch directions. And I didn't know that prior to this. Yep. There's two ways um, to swap motor direction and it's one's physical and that's by swapping the wires themselves. So you can run them at first. I always just run mine straight you know, in line, I guess you would say to where they just match up and they lay flat. Um, and I always reverse mine inside the computer with software, but you can just flip the wires as well. So just so you know, there are, there is another way to do it inside the computer. Um, if you want your build to, if you want your wires to just run flat and you don't want to have to worry about switching them around. The handy part of that is if you're in the field and say you have to swap a motor, you can do that quickly in the field and you don't have to have a computer to hook up um, and swap your direction. And that's done inside the BL Heli software. Are you Have you heard that at all, BL Heli? Yeah, I've heard of it. I only had used Betaflight for when I had my ready to fly, but I haven't used anything else besides that. So how Betaflight is to the flight controller... In, in the terms that it's the software interface you use to hook up to the flight controller, um, BL Heli is that same form of software for the ESCs. And when you use it, you still just hook your USB port to your flight controller normally. Um, and it's got a pass-through where it will work and allow you to program your ESCs. And that is where you can do the firmware where you can update the different versions of firmware on them and you can change their direction inside of that software. Um, can, can all flight controllers communicate with all ESCs or do you have to make sure you're specifically choosing the right ones? That's an interesting question in a, in an all sense. No, of course they all can't, but no, you don't, it's not something you have to be like really, really, really worried about, especially if you're buying newer gear, I guess you could say. Um, there are two different types of ESCs in the terms that there's a 32 bit ESC. That's a digital ESC and you need the 32 bit flight controller if you want to use all of its functions. Um, but that's, you can, you can use those 32-bit ESCs either way. You just can only use the 32-bit functions with a 32-bit flight controller, um, if that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. And what that's going to give you, you can actually see, like, the amperage draw on each of your individual ESCs and stuff like that. So you can, I mean, it's for, like, hardcore dudes, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, definitely. So, okay, so, and let's say, let's say when you're looking to start a quad again, we go back to that, and you, let's say you've picked out your frame, and let's say you know you, you, you want to use a certain flight controller. Which flight controller do you have currently? Uh, the Schizo Revolt version 3. Okay, and it's made to work, I think, with their um, ESC, right? Yep. Do you have yeah, their Yeah, it actually came with, with the adapter and everything. Okay. So you should be pretty good there. And I know on the firmware side of stuff, their stuff's really easy. I don't know if you've played around with the um, software side of it at all. It is different than Betaflight, um, but their system actually walks you through everything, man. It's pretty interesting how it works. It's got like a walkthrough configuration. So a lot of the stuff with Betaflight that you can get in there and adjust and you have to kind of get in there and adjust to get a quad going. You don't have to do all that stuff with flight one. Um, so you'll, you'll be in quicker on the setup side probably, but um, okay. So okay, let's I, say, I saw, I saw some conflicting things that people talked about where some people said that they, they kind of plug their flight controller in before they even get it all together. And some people wait until their build is done to plug it in. It doesn't matter. Um, I would recommend plugging it in when you buy it just to make sure it will communicate with your computer and it looks like it's functioning properly. Um, but the catch to that is a lot of flight controllers will work with on a USB port even if they won't work uh, 
from power, but that's a whole nother, don't even let, get me started on that. That's a whole nother, uh, troubleshooting okay. side of stuff. But, um, yeah, it, it, it wouldn't be a bad idea. I, I've had occasionally got a flight controller that was dead out of the box. And if I had plugged it up, I would have known that. So I would say from that perspective, yeah. Um, definitely plug it up. Okay. Another thing to to make sure before you plug it up again when you're done is to look it over and make sure you didn't get any solder, extra solder on it either. Just like a quick pro tip there. Right before you're about to plug it back in either to a LiPo or a USB. Um, always give it one extra look uh, to make sure you didn't get a solder yeah. ball somewhere you, you know. Yeah, I've seen solder hop. Like if you, if it's too hot and you hit it, it'll like. I've seen it like a little ball will fly somewhere else. Yeah, or a wire. It's common too. If like you pull a wire off, it it'll flick the solder. Um, yeah, a little bit. I that's pretty prone on ESCs a lot. Okay, so oh, I thought someone in the comments said multimeter. I we can get into it later, but I've never used one. I don't really know. I use one, but I don't know if that's something we could talk about too. Yeah, sure. Um, so, do you know what it is? Uh, I know basically it can check the voltages or something, and you can make sure it's getting the right voltages out. Okay, so let me see if this will work. I'm going on a limb here. Hopefully this will work. Yeah enough and just this so this is a multimeter and that's exactly what it does it's just test voltage and resistance or continuity um and it's just so you know what it looks like that's what it looks like okay so like would you just you have to put it on both ends of where the wire is going or something. Yeah. So let me see. Let me see if I can adjust this better and I'll actually show you. That camera is going to be in the way of that one, but I don't really care because I just want to show you what's going on here. There we go. Okay. So you've got a red and a black. And if you've noticed, that's common, right? You've got all your voltage and, and black, you know, red and black is common on a quad. So, yeah. And do you, do you understand? I know you did mention like VCC was one of the abbreviations. Um, VCC is, is full battery voltage. Think of it like that. It's whatever voltage your battery has. So if, if I take this um, multimeter and I stick the red to the red, and I'm being careful because it's an XT60 and you can short it, so black to black, and my battery's dead in my multimeter, <laughs> I think. <laughs> but yeah, 16.8. So yeah, you just touch it. Anywhere you want to know the voltage, and it will tell you. But the really, probably the biggest thing that we use it for in FPV, aside from voltage, they have this thing called a continuity checker. And what that does, you flip it to that, it looks like a little speaker. Yeah. Right there. And when you touch together, I don't know if you guys can hear that. Hear it? Yeah. 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 When you touch it, it beeps. So the good thing with this, you've got a red and a black, right? They they really should never touch on a quad. So once you've built the quad, you can go around to all your red and your blacks on your flight controller and touch them. And if you get a solid I'll make beep, sure it doesn't beep. Yep. You get a solid beep anywhere, you know you've got a short. Um uh, okay. So very, very, very handy to have. Uh, I would probably recommend getting one. You don't have to have it, but it's like one of those 
should haves. You know what I mean? They yeah. they make another yeah. device called a smoke stopper. Have you heard of that? Uh, I've heard of it. Again, I'm not sure what what it does. It's all it does is it plugs in line with your battery, where you plug the battery into the quad, and it's got a light on it that lights up um, if you've got a short. So it basically saves you, you hopefully, from blowing something up. Um, okay, that's awesome. I'll have to find one of those. Okay, so let me see here. Let me get back to something. I know we're kind of veering all ways, and that's okay. I, honestly, it may be easier and better for you just to answer your questions like this. Um, and I'll kind of go over some different stuff and talk to you. And while, while I'm doing that, you have questions, just ask them, you know? Yeah, yeah, that works. So if you remember back when I was talking about, like, the brain of the computer and UARTs and USB... <laughs> Um, that will let you, when you look at a flight controller, if you notice, see if I can pull better picture up here. I had one. I think it's in the manual. Let's see, let me check back in with the chat too. Anyone got this year's Chameleon TI? Cheap one that beeps. Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that. Speaking of like a tip for the the multimeter, dude, I think you can get them at like the Dollar Tree. Um if you just need one to just check for continuity. I might just run out and grab one then during this build. This one thing I love uh, looking at this on the uh, computer. I love the brain manual, how they take each thing and show you independently how to hook it up. But, um, oh yeah, UARTs. Okay. So the reason I wanted to put so much emphasis on UARTs, UARTs are, for one thing, I think they give a lot of newcomers the, a big problem when it, when it's time to hook up the receiver. Um, have you gotten to that stage yet at all or even looked at it? Yeah, well, I, I was looking at it, but I kind of got stumped because, uh, like, I know you, with the board that I have, the Revolt 3, um, it has, like, the inverted TX and RX, and you have to, like, bridge the 5 volt with the VCC or something. And I, that's all confusing to me. Okay. All right. So I'll break down both of those for you. Um on that board, it has the ability to basically make selectable options for your UARTs and for those little rails. If you look at uh, on the screen right now, this is a picture of a Crossfire receiver. What kind of receiver are you going to have? Uh, Crossfire Nano. Okay, cool. That's what's on the screen. So, um, okay. Thinking back to what I originally said, you know your black and red are for your power, right? So that's, I think you're probably pretty comfortable hooking that up, at least to the yeah to the board. Um, the Revolt's very similar to the Brain in the sense that it's got these little rails, and I think it's even on this side of the board on the Revolt. And those options you're talking about are kind of back, can you see my cursor? Yeah, I can see it. The little solder joints you're talking about are kind of right in this area um, on your flight controller. And what they're, what those yeah. little solder options are, they're just options. So for VCC or 5 volts, that's when you're going to tell this receiver or, or send this receiver one of the two. So if you select, if you solder bridge or select VCC, it would send this receiver full battery voltage. And if you solder bridge or select 5 volts, it's going to send the receiver 5 volts. So in your case, you would want to do 5 volts um, because that's what the Crossfire Nano requires. And most receivers are 5 volt for that matter. Can I can I send you an image of this one only because... Oh, yeah, I pull it up. From what I had... Okay, yeah, from, from what I had seen, it looked like people were bridging the VCC and the 5 volt. Like, that's how you get the 5 volt. 
that's why I was not sure. Okay, yeah, send me send it to me in Facebook, or or I can just pull it up if it's just the. Is it the Schizo Revolt? Yeah. Yeah. Oh hell. Here, I, I'll send it to you in a message. All right, I just. Yep, there it is. So that's the original. It's the version three one. Yeah, I'm, look, I I'm going to look pull yours up right now. Okay. There we go. Okay. Ah, okay. And, and you're right. They are bridging the five volts in VCC. Um, what that's saying is the pad is labeled VCC, right? See where VCC is yeah. right in front of those solder blobs? Yeah. And so for each little section of solder blobs, it corresponds to that pad that's right in front of it. So VCC goes to this one, and you're selecting either five volts or three volts. Um, here, TX1 goes here and you're selecting either normal or inverted um, TX4 goes here you're selecting either normal or inverted and I'll touch on what those are as well and here's this VCC up here it also has selectable 5 volt or 3 volt so that's how that's what all that even though it looks like a big huge thing it's actually each one's an independent little grouping of solder blob or of a, a bridgeable spot pads um, for each channel. And see right here, ground, VCC, TX1, TX4. And then ground, VCC, TX3, RX3. On yours, and, and somebody who's more familiar with Flight 1 um, can tell me here, but on yours, I would actually go to TX3 and RX3. And... The VCC here, I would do 5 volts. So bridge 5 volt and VCC. And then your ground. So on that picture where it had the red and the black and the two other leads, I would run all those here on yours. Because um, I don't think you even need to worry about your inversion. Crossfire works. I, I'm pretty sure it's uninverted, but... Yeah. Yeah. Artemis saying the same thing I'm saying in the chat. Okay, so I bridge the normal one. Well, if you if you wanted to use, well, I wouldn't use that either. Okay, so let me explain why I'm kind of stumbling here. See how this is labeled TX1 and TX4. Yep. So remember thinking of um, UARTs, right? And UARTs are like the USB ports. Each one of these is a UART. And so when you see RX3, TX3, that's one UART, and it has an input and an output. Receive and a transmit. Um, TX1 and TX4 are not the same UART. So your Crossfire receiver would be wired, and it's they're both TX. And Do you see, do you see what I'm saying? Uh, kind of. The receiver needs a TX and an RX. That may be uh, the easiest yeah, way. Okay. That's probably the... And they need to be on the same channel. Um, so, like, if this was TX1 and RX1, you'd be fine to use this, but it's not. It's actually two TXs. So, if I, in your case, you would want to use RX3, TX3, VCC, and ground. And your VCC, okay. you want to make 5 volts. You don't even have to worry about um, inverted or non-inverted here unless you hook something else to it. Okay. An example of that would be Smart Audio, which is on the um, video transmitter, which everybody calls VTX. So if you've heard VTX or, or RX, when I say RX, that's receiver. Um, 
and I'm just now thinking about this, it's a big stumbling area in the hobby, in my opinion. People call RX, but then you've got all these RXs on the board, right? So it gets confusing, and I'm sorry that I'm not, uh, I, I kind of assume you know what I'm talking about. I probably need to backtrack a little bit. What, your Crossfire RX, your Crossfire Receiver Nano, um, is what needs to connect to the RX3, the TX3, the VCC, and the ground. And so, even though it's called an RX, um, it's got its own receive and transmit. Does that make sense? Yeah. And the the receive is labeled RX. So sorry, I just I want to go a little deeper on that. So it made it made it more clear. Um, you know what? I want to know, and I'm kind of ashamed that I don't know already. To be honest. I want to know what VCC technically stands for. Electronics designation that refers to voltage from a power supply connected to the collector terminal of a bipolar transistor. Okay, wow. I um, don't feel too bad about not knowing anymore. Hmm. Voltage common collector. I noticed um, double A mentioned in the chat. Are they VCC until you you bridge them? I don't think they're anything. Double A. Um, so see the. Can you see my cursor? I think I asked you that already once, but. Yeah, I can see it. Okay, so see the VCC. It's correlates to there. VCC correlates to here. Double A, if you were to hook up something to the ground and the VCC without bridging this, I don't think anything would would I don't think it would work. I'm pretty sure it has to be bridged to pass one of those two voltages through to the VCC. Um he had asked in the chat if what would happen like if you just hook something up and didn't select your solder bridge. So okay. Um yeah. On your receiver, RX3, TX3, VCC, VCC and ground, and then bridge your 5 volts VCC. And that actually will, you'll be done with the crossfire. Um, another note on that, on each side, you know, you've got a TX and an RX, and they cross over. So one side's TX goes to the other side's RX, and that side's TX goes to the other side's RX. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, so from the flight controller's RX is the like Crossfire Nano TX. Exactly. Yeah, okay. And the best way that I, the easiest way that, actually I'm sure it's probably the same here. If you, if you lay the receiver where the ground and the five volts are just straight across, like you're, they match up, I would be willing to bet you can just wire it point to point, like your black to black, red to red. The next one would go to TX on the flight controller, and the next one would go to RX on the flight controller. Um, they should be in a line. You know what I mean? Yeah. You just got to make sure when you look at it that it's each component matches. Yeah. I don't want to get too far off, but like... I just want to, I want to send you something again, another link that I saw that no, you're fine. I think was one of the reasons I was confused also. This it's actually this is better um for us to be able to deal with things that you're, you know, you're going to actually deal with instead of me just rambling about what I think you want to know. <laughs> yeah. Um that makes sense. Let's see. Give me one second. Oh. Here we go. So if you, you go to at, yeah, the third at the diagram. Picture. Yeah. Let's see, will it let it stay? Yeah, it's good enough. 
So the XSR on that mm -hmm. picture on that left side, what is, is that the receiver? In this case, that is the receiver. Um, that's an FR Sky receiver. If you've heard FR Sky at all, or if you have an FR Sky radio. Yeah, I just picked up a Tyrannus. Okay. So if you were to use their brand of receiver, um, that's one of the options. And in their case, the, um, let me see if you can zoom in here. In their case, if you notice, it's only got the TX. It doesn't hook any. It does. The uh, FR Sky is a one wire connection. So you just well, have to. Well, the RX goes up to the top. It shows it. It goes up oh, to the uh, for RX smart port. at the very top. Yeah, for smart port. Okay. And you can do that with smart port because it's telemetry, but you wouldn't want to do that. You wouldn't want to do it this way with the crossfire. I mean, I guess you, well, no, you you wouldn't want to at all. I don't think. Because okay. they've got it going on the different. They've got it TX1 and RX3. And you you always want to stay on the same UART with crossfire. So TX1 and RX1. Or TX3 and RX3. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, but yeah, that can get that gets complicated when you don't really don't really know what you're looking at. No, no, totally. Um, and you may be able to find. Let me see. V three. You may be able to find a diagram. Sometimes you get lucky. It doesn't look like we're going to get lucky, though. This is close. Yeah. But they've got it going, too. Oh, never mind. Oh. Terrible. It looks like they did the same thing where they split it. Hmm. That's interesting. I've never hooked them up that way. I guess it's possible. That's they've got to go into a TX too, though. I don't. I don't know. I don't. Okay. I don't think that's right. Oh wait a minute. Look down here. Output one TX RX. Then smart audio. Hmm. I don't know. I would not hook it up that way. Um. I would go right here, RX3, TX3, VCC ground, and then just select okay. your 5 volts there. Um, I could be wrong here, but I don't, I don't think it would work like this because it's, it, it's got to, I mean, it's, you can see even right here, output 1, TX, output 2, RX. So if you send the TX to a TX, I don't think that's going to work. But... I don't know. You could try it, I guess, but I don't want to confuse you more. Um, and I'm a hundred. I'm a hundred percent confident if you hook it up to TX3, RX3, and five volts and ground, you'll work a hundred percent there. Um, okay. Because I've done that particular install myself. So let's see. Anybody else who's worked with it in the chat can let us know. Um, let me pull up your board again. What other questions do you have? Uh, one thing I didn't know, another one, was uh, what is BEC 5 volt? What's the difference between that and normal 5 volt? Um, I don't think there's any difference. They're both coming from the 5 volt regulator. Uh. I don't really think there's anything anything different at all. Like if you see the one down here, BEC five, then you see here BEC five, and you look up here five. Those are I'm pretty sure they're all going to go from the five volt regulator. I don't think there's two regulators on this board either. Um, okay. So nothing. And I don't think you would run into any instance. I don't know of any flight controller that has two five volt regulators on it. 
technically okay. it's battery so, elimination circuit is what it stands for. Um, as far as the abbreviation. Okay. So going back to the UART piece, um, so I'm assuming I, so they, the receiver is considered a UART. I'm assuming the IV Unify, which is a VTX, that's going to be a UART as well. Correct. Now that one's only going to okay. take one connection. And you want to think about what's actually happening to, to understand how to hook that up. Um, or at least this is how I try to think about it when I make the decision. So you've got the flight controller and you've got your, your uh, video transmitter. Do you understand what smart audio is for or what, what it's used, what its purpose is used for? Uh, I can tell you what I think it does. Okay. I think it's you people, you can change settings from what, like a Bluetooth device or something. You can change settings from your uh, transmitter from a script called a Lewis script, which is installed on your transmitter, your Tyrannus. Um, Bluetooth, I'm not so sure about. I think, well, I mean, you would have, if you've got a Bluetooth module, I guess that's possible. But I don't know if, I don't, oh, think, okay. I don't think this one has one built in. You can get a little Speedy B Bluetooth module that you plug into a flight controller and it lets you use your phone to communicate. But that that's kind of separate from smart audio. Um, all smart audio does, it lets you tell that video transmitter what channel to transmit on. That's it. At least for what for all intents and purposes. So the flight controller is going to tell the video transmitter what to do. And so with me saying that, do you think that you would hook that to a receive or a transmit? The You're going to it's going to be to a transmit because the flight controller is telling the yes. BTX what to do. You got it. And so that's which, which on the board, which one would you pick? You've already um, got, you've already got your crossfire hooked up to RX three and TX three. So you can't pick those. So I would use like TX one with the normal uh, bridged. Got it. You got it. Okay. Always go normal unless otherwise, you know, that's, that's mainly for FR sky receivers. I believe, um, I believe everything, most everything else is going to be normal. Um, so in other words, you don't even have to worry about it if you're using crossfire, which good call on that, by the way. Okay. On, on the crossfire, you mean? Say that one more time. Good call on not using it, you mean? Um, no, good call on using crossfire. You're new. You're oh, pretty, okay. relatively yeah. new to the hobby, but you're getting the good stuff, so that's good. Um, I know. I mentioned when I was we were talking about doing the live stream. I was like, well, I could go into a whole big bunch of industry stuff too if you want. That's kind of one of the. That's a whole nother rant I could get on about like what's good and what isn't and what to use and what not to use and that sort of stuff. But uh, oh, yeah, yeah. it's good that you're already on Crossfire. Have you had it working yet? Have you used Crossfire yet? I have not. It's all still in the packaging. And I I just took the, the, the Crossfire module out, but okay. I haven't hooked anything up. Did you get the micro module or the full size? Uh, the micro. Okay. Um, and I just got the QX, QX7 to hook it up to. So okay. I have to do like the, I guess there's a mod I have to do to it. So You don't have to do it. Um, you can do it if you want it to work faster. But I believe it, at least my radio worked without the mod. Uh, it just wasn't, it's not technically as fast. As, but it's one of those things that it's, I think, at least somewhat of a perception thing for me. Um, maybe I'm a little slower than my quad is, but I couldn't really tell a difference when I did the mod. So, um, or I, you know, you can, but it's like, I don't know. It worked just fine out of the box. So, 
okay. I will say it's very, yeah. you want to follow the steps when you're doing your crossfire, like start with your radio and get your ready radio ready for it. Um, make sure you update the crossfire on a computer and then install it, that kind of thing. But I, we could, that's a whole nother, like whole nother snowball tangent. We could probably do another live stream when you're ready to do that. Um, <laughs> But, yeah, that'd be good because I, I I've never even set up a um a radio or anything like that. So I was just using again the RTF radios, which were I didn't have to do anything to really. Yeah, that's gonna be prob that might be one of the more challenging things of the whole thing. Although, like you say, you've got a software background, so you probably don't or hardware either way, you probably don't have that as big of a limitation there as some people would. The biggest tip I can give you is when you go to do your radio and install the crossfire just go to a go go and find like a Oscar Ling tutorial Ling L I A N G Oscar Lee L I A N G um he's got great step by step walk through tutorials on like the correct way and the correct steps to do installations and it's I don't know I prefer for some of those types of things I prefer more of a blog style to a video because I can just scroll down the page and like do each step and I you know what I mean with a video you have to kind of pause it and then like not not to say there's not good videos on how to do the crossfire installation but um yeah so yeah it's I think it's Oscar L I A N G I'm not sure if it's .com that dude's wealth 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 of hookup diagrams and all kinds of stuff actually let me show you it's the modern day internet I keep forgetting um, <laughs> this tutorial explains how to install it in the XD9 plus so he's got it for one radio um, not sure I'll have it for your specifically. Probably going to be very similar, if not exactly, but this is kind of one of the things I actually wanted to talk about too, was how I research things. Um, That's probably the best one. Old Stingy. Quick question uh, for you. Did you... Copyright crap. But, um... <laughs> no, that's telemetry fix. Okay. This one may be a good one. And then here's on the mod. That's what you do, or what you install. It's four wires. It's not too terribly um, difficult. It's just you want to make sure you're removing the one particular component on the actual board. That's the Philip Seidel. That's who I was looking for, too. Okay, I'll have to play around with that. I wouldn't worry about doing the mod if I were you. Yeah, not, um, at least at the beginning, I'm definitely not going to. Yeah, I would get it working and not stress over it. Let's see. And as long uh, as you, what I was what? talking about with the radio, as long as you'll just kind of patiently follow the step-by-step -step to install it, you'll be good. Okay. So what are, uh, everyone always talks about Lewis scripts, but what are they actually? Lua scripts are, think of it as a page on your radio screen um, that lets you see all the stuff you can adjust in Betaflight. So, um, and I can show you actually. Let's see here. Just a second.
this is my radio, but they're gonna, obviously, but they're gonna be very similar. Okay. So to get to them, you go inside of a menu. It's two button presses, and you see, you'll see all these different your SD card contents basically, and you should have a folder labeled BF. You go inside of that, and you execute the Lua, and see where it's got the dashes. Those would all be the yeah. the values. Um, let me see here. I'm not sure if this quad, I just did this one last week, and I don't know if I even set it up for this, but. So they. Yeah. So they put in. So when I plug my quad in, now it's showing all the different values um, that you can change in Betaflight. So you can adjust your PIDs. Your rates. So without the Lua script, you wouldn't have been able to see this and adjust them, basically? Correct. Okay. Uh, your okay. anti-gravity, gyros, your ESC protocol, stick mins and maxes, and there is your smart audio. Crap, I didn't mean to go past it. Okay, so touching back on that smart audio... When you hook up that Unify to Smart Audio, this is what it's letting you do. Um, and it's super handy because otherwise you've got to either put your goggles on and adjust it inside your OSD or have a little screen um, like, a, like one of these little screens um, so you can see what's going on. So I love the Lua scripts because between the Lua script and the smart audio, I never have to worry about like adjusting my channel. I just go in here, say I want to turn my power down. I'm at a race. Hit that, hit save. Boom, now my quad's there. Oh crap, so I'm on the wrong channel. I go here, R2. Boom, now I'm on R2. Like it's that quick to change your power and your channel output which is huge if you're going to be flying with other people. If you're flying by yourself, it's probably not like the end of the world, but it, once you start flying with other people, it is super, super handy. So I should be able to have this on my transmitter as well, my radio? Yes. Okay. Your Lua scripts installation, you want to think of that totally separate from like um, Crossfire. Thinking of as two separate like entities, you'll you would want to get Lua scripts installed and working, um, probably before. I don't think it would really matter, but probably before, and then do your Crossfire installation. I would do them separately um, when you go to install that on your transmitter. It's and it's the same kind of thing. It's actually really simple as long as you follow the steps. The biggest thing is going to be that you make sure you get the right firmware installed on your SD card. And then you're going to install your SD card in your transmitter, and it will just kind of work, um, basically. Okay. Let me switch back to this. Okay. So you, at this point, let's go back to... Where's the flight controller? There it is. Okay. At this point, you know you're going to hook your crossfire up to TX3, RX3, VCC, and ground. You're going to select 5 volts for that. Um, your Unify, do you have a 5-volt Unify or a high-volt Unify? Uh, I got the HV, the high-volt. Okay. Um, you could power it from the board, obviously, from VBAT here if you chose to. And ground. Um, most people suggest powering your video transmitter and your camera from the same place. Um, so just keep that in mind. If you're going to power your camera from your flight controller, power your VTX from your flight controller. If you're going to power your camera from your power distribution board or your ESC, then power your uh, VTX from your ESC. Does that make sense? 
but my camera, well, the camera that I'm probably going to be using, I think only can take five volts. So I don't know if the ESC has a five volt output. I don't know. In that case, what I would do, you've, okay, you've got your, I forgot about that. You've got your, what, 10 volt? You've got a 10 volt output on the, uh, on the board, right? On the ESC? Yeah, that's not being used. And you've got a high volt unify. So what you could do, and what I would do, what I would suggest to do, power the unify from that 10 volts or lipo. Either one is should be fine. And then power your camera from the unify because the HV unify should have an output for the camera that's filtered. Yeah, I think I saw it. It had a power for the camera specifically. Um the only, and that should be pretty straightforward. You j it's kind of it kind of goes back to that same logic of deciding, you know, okay, am I using a power distribution board? Okay, I can power it from that. If I'm not, where do I power it from? Okay, in your case, you're going to power it from the ESC and you know you can power your camera from your Unify, so you're good. The only thing you have left between because you've already got your smart audio figured out, right? You're going to take it to one of the TXs there on your board so you're, you're not worried about that the only thing left you've got is your actual video signal um, and there's a reason that that video signal most flight controllers will have an in and an out does this one have the OSD or not do you know I'm not sure I'm not sure if the Schizo V3 has that. it or not I don't see an OSD chip on this side, and I would almost be thinking it would be tough to fit it on the other. Um, if, I hope because OSD is actually pretty useful. Well, there's a there's a good catch or a good good alternative. It's super useful in the sense of um, the flight controller OSD will be able to display tons of information that a camera OSD will not. But lots of cameras nowadays do at least have voltage. Um, so you can at least see your battery voltage. Um, okay. Now the tricky thing with that is, can you, can you see where there could be a problem? Cause we were just talking about power in that camera. If we power that camera with five volts from the Unify, it's not going to have full voltage to display in the goggles. So you, most cameras actually have an extra wire, um, that you can run to VBAT and give that camera that display. So just kind of kind of log that in your mind cuz when you get to hooking all this up if your flight controller does not have an OSD and you're going to want voltage, then you have to hook that extra wire up. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. It's uh let me show you. Do you know what camera you have? Um I have the well, I have a micro right now, that I'm, but I'm getting a mini. Um, the Runcam Swift Mini 2 is what I'm getting. But I right now, I think I have the Foxier Micro. Okay. The Foxier gonna, Predator version 2 Micro. Are you going to install the, um, the Foxier or are you going to wait for the Runcam? Um... The run cam is not supposed to be here for a month, so I'm probably going to end up Jeez. getting tired of waiting and install the Predator. Okay. Let's see. Is it the Micro V3, do you know? Uh, it's the V2. V2. Well, well, let me make sure. I would hate to... I would hate to tell you something that doesn't actually matter. But I'm, it's probably got this wire, this extra wire on it. Let's look at it and see. Come on, website. Man. I don't want your cookies.
Yeah, I can tell it's got it because it's got a big connector on it. I was hoping for a shot of the back of the camera because there's usually... Let's see. There we go. Okay. VSIN. In this case is what that's for. Is that voltage sense or something? Yeah. So, and it, just to, to for you to understand it, um, because you're coming out of that Unify with only 5 volts, that camera would want, if you didn't hook anything else up and just left it alone, that camera would show you five volts in your display and it would never change because as your battery voltage decreases, it's still going to give you five volts out on that regulator. Um, so by giving it that extra wire and all you, you only have to hook up the one wire to, um, you would want to go to V bat on the flight controller, but, uh, you only have to hook up the one wire. The ground is already hooked up through your previously hooking up the ground in five volts. So you don't have to worry about like an extra wire for that. Um, and actually, let's see, VCC ground video. And then just so you know, the, most cameras, they come with this little dongle. It lets you adjust their settings. And that hooks up to the extra two ports here. Some flight controllers okay. will let you actually wire that to the flight controller, and it's one just one more thing you can control through your um, sticks, through your, you know. Okay, so we're saying it does say in the specs it's got built-in OSD. Awesome. So you will, you will be splitting your video wire then. You won't run it directly from the Unify to the camera. You'll want to split it and go into the uh, flight controller... Let's look at that. Let's see if we can see the other side. Man, that that picture you sent me is by far the best. Yeah, I couldn't find a better one. <laughs> Let's go back to that. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's see if it's labeled. It must be, well, have to be on the other side. What's flight one's web address? I think it would be flight one dot com. There we go. It is. Oh, not saying not sure about the flight controller, but the cam. I know the yeah. I know the predator guys would have uh, OSD. Hmm. Now I'm intrigued yeah, to find out. I don't know if the actual flight controller does or not. I don't think so. Revolt V3 would be it, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I don't see an OSD chip. And not talking about it. Even though but you do have the Schizo one, and I know that is a little different. Schizo Nova. Well, that's the frame. Art Artemis in the comments is saying it doesn't have one. Okay. No, because there isn't one. All right. So, yeah, scratch that. But just so you understand, if you ever do in the future get a flight controller with OSD, you'll have to split your video wire um, and run it through the flight controller, basically, so that it can get the sig so that it can s 
uh, interject the OSD signal into the video. Does that make sense? Yeah. The good news with that is you then don't have to wire the extra VCC or vSense um, wire because your OSD is going to tell your voltage. So you wouldn't have to do all that extra wiring in that case. Um, well, you have to do extra video wiring, but not extra wiring for vSense. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, so video transmitter you should be pretty comfortable on. You know you're going to power it from your ESC output. Um, you know you're going to power your camera from it. You'll need to hook up the additional vSense wire for the camera. Uh, otherwise, your power ground and video can come right from the Unify to the camera, so you should be fine there. Um, smart audio on one of the TX, the available TXs. Let's see. So, any other questions on the video? I don't think so. That makes sense for that. VTX stands for video transmitter, and that's what that abbreviation. I'm trying to think of any other abbreviations you'll see in the video side a lot. You'll see some stuff on flight controllers that let me show you that maybe just so you, just to plant a seed so that in the future if you ever um, you ever do find you're going to do what I'm talking about you'll have heard about it and it won't just be you know blind see here VIVO that would be video in video yeah. out and all you do um, you just think of it like this you've got your your video transmitter it has to be transmitting video, right? Um, and that means the camera is sending video into it. So you would want to come out of the camera to the flight controller, out of the flight controller to the video transmitter. Um, you're just splitting it. You're just kind of interjecting yeah, so it into the signal. It's in line so it can get information. Yeah, exactly. Um, and the, that's that's what I was touching on at the very beginning about like the USB and the input output. This hobby is all about like once you grasp that everything has to be powered, and everything has a signal, and they're separate but together because everything's got it. You know what I mean? Um, but like once you get your your head around that, it makes it easier to to see on each thing. Oh, okay, I've just got to worry about my power. And then what are my signals doing? And if you start thinking about where are they, where are those signals actually like coming from and going, and it it's, makes it a lot easier to realize, okay, it should be on a t TX or whatever. Um, for me. So yeah, it's definitely helpful. What other uh, what other questions you got? Um, I guess this is another thing on abbreviations so like the esc has the motor connections labeled like s1234 mm -hmm. but the um the flight controller has pwm1234 is do you know what the difference like is there a reason that those are different or does it not matter i can tell you well it doesn't matter just so you know um but i okay. it's they're one in the same thing the s it stands for signal so signal one signal two signal three signal four um, PWN stands for pulse width modulation, and that's the type of signal. Um, trying to think of, well, like, yeah, like a cell phone, you know, it would be a cellular signal. That's the kind of signal it is. Um, pulse width modulation is the type of signal. So they're one and the same. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. I just didn't know if it mattered what you hooked up to what. As, as long as you hook up one to one, two to two, three to three, four to four, um, do you know how to know that? Like how to know which one's one and two and three and four? Um, I guess, I guess not. I think I just kind of hooked it up. I don't know if it mattered. I didn't know it mattered. Um, yeah, it does. It does. Cause the flight controller, like basically you it know it knows where it is it is in space and has a front and a back and a side to side. And so if it thought motor one was motor three, then
then it wouldn't be able to do its front and front and back to back. You know what I mean? Like it would be cockeyed or something. It would it would go crazy. Um, can that be changed in um, the configuration, or do you have to actually rewire it? No, it can actually be changed in the back end inside of Betaflight in the CLI. You can type in um, commands to reroute those motor outputs. You can make one any like you could take number one and make it one two three four five six however many outputs the flight controller has. Um, but it's it probably wouldn't be difficult for you because you're in IT, so I'd say you're somewhat familiar with command line, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. So you might actually like it, but. Uh, for some people, it might be challenging. I wouldn't recommend a beginner, probably, uh, without some sort of technical background, just jump into the CLI, only because you it's kind of like it can get screwed up, and then it's, if you, even for someone technical, the motor order stuff in particular, because of the way the CLI under, interprets it, it's not as simple as like uh, motor one, two, three, and four. The CLI actually assigns it, like logic commands, so it'll be like FX4 equals A01, or you know what I'm saying? It, it can get kind of complicated. Um, okay. So I wouldn't yeah, recommend. Yeah, so I probably it. just rewire it if it's messed up now. Um, but I can tell you how to tell that. Let me. That's what actually I wanted to show you. Let me grab a, a quad real quick. So let's see. All right. I'm trying to think of this the best way. I, I, I guess it doesn't matter. Motor 1's Motor 1. So this is Motor 1. And if you think of the quad sitting on the ground, it's always going to be the lower right. So like if you sit the quad facing away from you, Motor 1 is always lower right. And it goes okay. 1... Two, three, four, and once you've kind of got it, you'll. It's always that way. Um, in beta flight, you can actually you can change all that stuff, but that's stock. It's one, two, three, four. Okay. And there's also the props inverse outverse. That kind of stuff can affect that, but. It's really deeper than you have to worry about, especially with Flight 1, because I'm pretty sure you just tell it. It'll ask you, do you want your props to fly or normal or reverse? Um, I don't know if you've seen or heard of that either way, or if you care. Yeah. Um, no, it doesn't matter to me, but... People say with normal that you get more grass on your camera and that like your quad gets dirtier, but uh, with... I, I've always had my normal. I don't really have a lot of issues with that. Uh, I just kind of leave it alone, but I'm more of a get it going and fly it guy, you know? So I don't, like, if it's extra stuff, I generally don't mess with it if it's not broke. Yeah. And that kind of goes into what I was talking about earlier about, like, the deeper side of the hobby. So um, we've touched on a lot of different components today, right? We've talked about flight controllers. Electronic speed controllers or ESCs, VTXs or video transmitters, um, signal or uh, what's the right word? Receiver, but I wanted to try to get a better way to say that. But um, your, your link receiver, Crossfire, FR Sky, whatever, um, cameras. We've talked about a lot of them. And I know out there when you're getting into, dude, there's like hella brands, right? There's all these different brands, all these different... Um, companies, you just want to think of it like this. They they all kind of do the same thing. Like everybody's flight controller is going to control, it's going to be the brain of your quad and control. I'm not going to say they all fly the same or they all wire the same or that kind of stuff, but they're all going to get you in the air. Um, Everybody's video transmitter is going to transmit video. Some do it cleaner with, you know, some can, uh, they have a lot better like they're only on that one channel and they're not bleeding over into others and stuff. But as far as, you know, camera, they're all going to take a picture. They're all, you know what I mean? So don't stress out over that stuff too much. What you want to do or what I've done in the past is, is really truly just start reading and looking at people's experiences. Um, you'll, it's, 
it's hard to know in the hobby because there are people who just like endorse things to endorse them and there are people who endorse things because they like truly fly and believe in them but i would say most people i would think what they're endorsing they're using for the most part so find somebody you like and let's you know see what they like is a good good word of advice for that don't let the yeah, amount of shit out there stop you from actually like building and flying because you can get lost in like a sea of freaking what's this and oh the new that and you know that kind of stuff yeah that's what i it was kind of overwhelming at first when i was trying to choose on my parts that i wanted um i'll tell you you know there oh i meant to touch on a uh, flight controller software too one the biggest decision you probably have is is like what flight controller i say that because they they all all of the softwares are different they all do fly a little different they all interact a little different but when it comes to hooking them up they're all gonna wire up the same so like once you learn how to wire a flight controller you'll know how to hook up any flight controller um you don't have to stress that like you're not going to go to one and it's something might be labeled different but as far as functionality there once you know how to hook it up man it's going to work the same on anything okay and that's awesome because the beginning is a pain so once i once i figure it out i'm looking forward to building the next one and you'll see some like uh you'll see the big companies or whatever you want to say but you've got all the flight controllers run some form of software. So you've got Betaflight, um, Flight One, or KISS. I've always used Betaflight. Um, I've done a lot of builds for Flight One, but I, and I've actually never flown KISS. I really want to, but I never have. Um, that's just one of those things where I've, you know, I don't know, man. I've, uh, what I've worked works, what I'm doing works, and I'm not, not, not wanting to go too far outside of that comfort zone. But, um, uh, I can't say anything bad about any of them. You know, they're all going to work. And I know that Flight 1 is for sure the easiest one to set up. That is that is 100% for sure. Um, it's actually so easy to set up that if you're used to beta flight, it like screws with your head. Because you're like, wait, it can't just work. That's no way. Like, I have to adjust things and make settings and changes. And you know, it just, they ask you questions and you do the stuff and it works. It's really, really cool how that is. Um, That's awesome. What frame are you throwing that on? Was it an Alien or an Astro? Uh, the Astro X. Yeah, okay. I, I know I, I noticed that design. That's a great frame. I've built a few of those, and they're really nice carbon. Nice. Yeah, it seems like it's pretty sturdy compared to the things I've seen in the past. Yeah. And then you got good stuff. You're going with good gear, so you should have a good experience. Um, Can you think of any more questions that you've got? Uh, honestly, I don't think so. I think it's going to be, it's a good start for me to uh, try to get things built and up and running. Well, I think, I, I think it'll of... be good. Like you said, maybe to do another, another stream or at least talk with you about setting the transmitter up and the, the, uh, the radio up at some point. Yeah, I'm down. We can, t we can do it either way. I mean, I'm here to, to help you get flying regardless. You, we definitely don't have to stream. Um, hit me up whenever, as far as that goes, like, I don't care if it's three in the morning, you got a question, I'll try to answer you. Uh, but yeah, definitely. And I would say too, I know I kind of dumped a bunch of info on you too. So don't, you know, don't feel bad if tomorrow you don't remember most of this crap and you got to ask me something, feel free to, I would be glad to help you. Um, for sure. That goes for anybody out there watching. Yeah. All the guys in the chat are talking about how you got good stuff, so you should be good. Nice. Yeah. I'm looking forward to getting it all together and trying it out. Cool. All right. It's a little well, nerve-wracking though when you're doing it the first time. Yeah, man. Trust me. It's it even just um, even just like starting to solder can be a challenge too. Uh, I don't know if you've had much experience soldering, but um, that can even be you yeah, know, I've done some stuff. daunting. I always say with that, just um, soldering. It's all about time and temperature. So if you're working with a correct temperature, which for me is most of the time between 700 to 750 uh, Fahrenheit, um, and then all, the only other alt, val, the only other uh, what's the word option 
is going to be how long you leave the soldering iron on, right? If you know you're set at a good temperature, then when you come into your solder joint, it's all about how long you leave it on there. And um, you can actually do like a little count, like, a, you know, one, two, you know, then solder one, two, and pull away um, to kind of like get yourself in the habit of doing consistent soldering. And if you've got any like broken electronics um, or like, you know, I don't know, an old RC car or a VCR or just whatever, some shit in your garage that you like forgot was there, take it apart and practice removing the stuff and like soldering new. That way you don't have to mess up any of your actual, um, you know, quad gear. Yeah, definitely. I have a whole bunch of old computer stuff I can mess around with. For sure. Man, I want to thank you for coming on, dude. It's been great. Um, had a good time getting to know you and uh, helping you learn, hopefully. And um, yeah. I'm going to end the yeah, stream definitely. here in just a moment on that note. I will give a quick shout out to the chat and ask if anybody, uh, you guys got any questions in there. Um, I see ads. What's up, ads? Thanks to you in a while, buddy. Artemis, Double uh, A, Noid, got Tony in there. A few other, few other folks hanging out. Appreciate all you guys. Nameless, what's going on, man? Uh, if you guys have any questions, exhilarating, you're around. Kingpin, Rickster, RD. We got a few people hanging out. Spider wants to know if you had planned to put a capacitor on the build. I actually did put one on there. Yep. Okay. So, uh, 1,000, was it, ohms or something? I don't know how what the terminology is. Uh, probably microfarad, but yeah, the little, it looks yeah, like a that. little U and an F. Yeah. Yeah. So they, it came with two, um, capacitors and I, I use the bigger one just to be safe. A lot of people, when they'll use smaller ones, they'll use them on individually on an ESCs when they're using individual ESCs. Um, you always want to use probably at least I would say a thousand, uh, and on your voltage rating, if you notice on the cap, it'll say like 1000 UF and then it'll have 25V or 35V. Um, just make sure that your voltage rating on that cap is higher than the highest battery you're going to plug in. So like a 5S or a 6S, you would need a, to just double check your voltages and stuff like that. But uh, most of the 1000s are 35 volt, I think. So they should handle most and... You're probably not worried about 5S or 6S batteries anytime soon anyway. I wouldn't be. Yeah. No, I, on, I only have 4S right now anyway. Yeah. 4S is plenty. I actually started on 3S, um, and the change from 3S to 4S was like going from like a four-banger, you know, to a V8, you know? So it was a big difference. Yeah. Joe Stan, I see Hopefully you in the chat. Too. What's up, buddy? Cool. All right. Well, I think we're going to call Thanks. the stream a day, man. Again, I want to thank you for coming on. Um, like I said, just hit me up anytime, man. Yeah, thank you so much for all your help. I appreciate it. No problem, buddy. I have truly enjoyed it. So I hope you have a good night. To everybody yep. out there in Internet land, I hope you have a good day, too. I hope this helps some people. Um, I may try to go back through and break it apart and put some timestamps in there for people, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, just trying something new out. So if any of you guys want to come on and, like, talk FPV, let me know, okay? Just taking it back old school. Just talk FPV. That's what it's all about. I hope everybody out there has a good day. Take it easy. <laughs>